Well, folks, it doesn't get much better than this, does it? We've got a end user repairing, and it's a Harrier CBX. Wow. With a factory original mic. Right, well, I suppose we ought to check the fuses, not a hair grip. Yep, two amp, that looks like the original. Just while we're in here, I think it'd be prudent. to clean this up and on here somewhere amongst all the tat shouldn't be there they left over from the other day hmm it's supposed to be a small file on here Clean it up a bit with the side cutters. Yeah, the 20 millimeter fuses on here. Most CB radios are inch and a quarter fuses, just to confuse matters. So I can't remember what he said was wrong. I will look at his letter. Well, on the face of it, it looks nice. I hope that's not on an angle because it's spilt its guts. That's something which, um, because it hasn't got a vent on the top on this kind of capacitor. So, if we look at um, a more normal capacitor, like I'll go, I'll zoom into this one. it's kind of got a Y on the top so that it can split open easily if the inner goes over a certain uh, pressure. But on that big one it doesn't have that and some of the others it doesn't. And with it now being on an angle you start to think has the guts come out from underneath and made it go on an angle so it might be prudent to be changing that. What we don't want is sets coming back having bounced. A bouncer is a service job that comes back again. It can happen. It can happen even even when we've been around scratchy corner with them. Because things can happen in transit. So we'll connect this up to our crocodile clip leads which inevitably will short together and let's put the soldering iron on I just feel compelled to change that I knew where it was when I put the set down I've lost my plot now, there we are Once again, we've got the air conditioning on in the background, so you might find that rather louder than I am. I 
I I do think it's been leaking. That's glue. But that isn't. Let's go back to normal position. Now we haven't got any SR meter on here. Mr. Chippy's um, borrowed that, but we do have a an LCR and impedance meter. So it's a, what's it, what's it supposed to be? A thousand microfarads? Yeah. saying it's 1100 microfarads which is probably about right what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a replacement I don't think we've got any out here ok so that's fitted we've put a Nikicon one in we've upped the temperature and we've upped the, the voltage a bit so that's what we tend to do no need to remove the old glue because it wasn't across the terminals. So I've got a piece of paper out. Let's see what the radio does. We'll switch on. Helps if we switch the power supply on. Sounds like the signal generator is more or less where it was yesterday. But we'll start with transmit. So we'll put picture in picture on. We're on 3 watt scale, the radio's doing more than full scale deflection, it's doing exactly 4 watts. Deviation, wallow. Just got to pop down a fraction on that. Frequency, let's put the camera over to that. 2779125, we're looking for. One three three is virtually spot on. Let's see what we can get it to. Do that here and now. Leave it at that. That's excellent. And receive, we can already hear that. I'll just put the signal generator spot on. I've gone and knocked it off. So we'll go up to the sign ad meter. Put the tone on high. Make sure our RF gain's on full. Point two six five microvolts for a twelve dB synad. I don't even see them that as good usually. In fact, this apart from that capacitor, which is, I think was a bit iffy, this this radio doesn't actually need anything doing really at all. But it's here for service, and service it will get. And somehow, from somewhere, we have a meter. We'll start. 
by putting the radio on channel 40. Connecting that prod to earth and making sure that the VCO is aligned properly. So, far end of resistor 4. We'll have to get the service manual out because that's the way it is. Now we're on the dodgy old one again, are we? So it's 4 volts. Yeah. So we'll start off with finding 4 volts, hopefully. 4.11, very very slightly high. So just knock down that coil a fraction, a very small fraction. There we go. Now we're going to transmit. Again, it needs to be four volts. And also the trimmer capacity there. Receive, transmit, receive. Now then we go to channel one and the manual says 1.8 to 2.5. So back on the test point, we're at 2.19 and on transmit we're on 2.31. So we know that it's going to track over all the temperature range that the manufacturer says it will. So we'll go into doing the transmitter. So we want to channel 20. Turn that volume down. And then once again we're going to, with the green tool, put all these to maximum. So we're just a shade away from three from four watts. Because as they warm up they drop off a bit. What 13.8 volts. And that's maximum, which is 4.6 watts. And then we're back to the service manual, and it tells us to do what? Rotate L4 clockwise, 4.4. Clockwise for 4.4. And then nine counterclockwise for three point eight watts. So we're not going to do three point eight watts, we're going to do four. Because we don't have to try and get this through customs. So there's four. And then on channel one and forty it should be pretty close. So we're on channel forty now. 4.05 watts, channel 1, 4 watts, so that's fine. 
So although it's still 4 watts, we know that it's set right because I've just done it. Reset 4 watts. Done that, done that. Let's do low power. So on low power, the radio should be doing 400 milliwatts. It's actually doing one and a half watts, which is not helpful. I seem to recall it's that one. They're often dirty, these. This is no exception. Maybe that position is the only one it works in. There we go, 400 milliwatts spot on. So that's done. And we're going to look at the meter back in 4 watt mode. And we should be getting 4. Well, it's banging across. We'll just adjust that. Spot on the 4 on the dummy load. Then we want the mic gain one in the central position which it isn't and deviation to 2.2 to 2.5 it's a bit too loud so pop that down now Let's try it there wallow that's a bit too quiet now Wallow, spot on. Well, as far as I can see, that's transmit done. Let's look at receive. We'll start by looking at the detector. So we're going to put S9 equivalent signal on the signal generator, which is 100 microvolts received in the UK. And this is just connected across the extension speaker. There's nothing clever. It's a 10 mega oscilloscope. It could be a 1 mega oscilloscope. We're only looking at audio. Don't get the misconception you need it. 30 meg oscilloscopes look at 27 meg CB because we're not looking at the output frequency. So there we have it, and let's just see whether it needs any adjustment. Which is the best tool for this, that one is. Seems to recall it's the one down there without looking at the manual. No, oh, that was more or less spot on. Right, well, let's look at the cyanide meter now. I doubt we're going to get anything else out of this. I'll probably fix it worse. Tell you what, we just got an improvement there. Put a bigger signal on. Put a bigger signal on again. Let's try again.
There's one hiding under there. Okay, see what we've got now. So for 12 dB. Two, four, six. We've now got 0 0.26 microvolts. So we've, all we've done is knock the five off. But we know it's set right, and that's important. Let's see what we're doing for 20 dBs. Twenty dB sign out it is not point three nine five just under not point four micro it's very very good. So now we'll look at the squelch. Oh no we won't. We'll look at the S meter. So I've put S9 on the test test set, which is the S9 Look at that, it is absolutely spot on. I'm sure this has just been serviced. You know, it's spot on. And that's our preset for the meter. Being able to take it up that mirror is fraction. And then finally, squelch. So I'll put the attenuated controls onto the screen. What we're going to do is set the squelch to full. And we'll go up. I want this to come in at 100 microvolts. 1, 3, 10, 30. I want it stronger than that. And that's where I want it, coming in at 100 microvolts. This is the first adjustment I felt need, need, really needed doing. So we'll turn the signal generator to standby, set the squelch to threshold. That's threshold. Park this at 0 0.3 microvolts, switch the signal generator back on. And see when it comes in. Coming at 0 0.29 of a microvolt. No, it's not. It's coming at 0 0.9 of a microvolt, and it's disappearing off at 0 0.8 of a microvolt. In at 0 0.9, out at 0 0.8, which is where you expect these sets to be. So that's it. Do any of these controls crackle? No. So I'll put it back together and we'll plug it in. That's the best working set I've ever seen come in for service. Now of course if I had looked at the email, it, what he wanted was the whole radio recapping regardless. So. <laughs> So I've just spent the last 40 minutes doing a complete recap. Just checked over the transmitter, still just doing. That doesn't affect it. I've retouched up the deviation, slight effect there. We'll just check that receiver again because some of the capacitors are in the receiver and it can be affected. So we'll just go through that once again. Should have done it first. And let's have a look. Um, where are we on receive? So once again we'll just check the detector, 
take the bench light off, switch on camera to that position, just check we've got the maximum recovered audio with an S9 signal, sufficient volume up for a meaningful waveform. That hasn't altered great. Check we are with this front end. No, that's fine. Bigger signal on for that one. Let's put it to about 12. Let's put a smaller signal on for that one. got it. Check the IF. This is a few capacitors around here. Check the one down there. If we can get to it. Easier on a Rotel 220. Let's have a look. Put that to 12. That looks to be optimum. And we'll check once again that we've actually got. Um, a decent sign and we're about at 12 where we are it's now 0.23 microvolts just come back down that little tiny bit more I think what basically we've reduced the noise in the IF just around there I think that's basically what's uh, improved that so it's Nikicon capacitors throughout, and I've got a nice bundle of them on the bench. I don't. Did we check? We did do the meter, didn't we? But I'll just recheck it because of the alterations. Yep, that's spot on. Squelch. I'll recheck that. So I'm going to put squelch to full. Yeah, that now needs readjusting. So I've got it on S9. In fact, I'll show you the attenuator controls. So we're, we're on 100 there. So I need to adjust the squelch till it comes in. Which is there. So that's exactly where I want it once again. And we'll check the sensitivity once again. Turning the signal generator to standby at 0 0.3 of a microvolt. Setting threshold. Switching the signal generator on, seeing when it comes in. It's coming in at 0.51. It's leaving at 0.48. It's actually improved the sensitivity of the squelch. Again, we've got some components in that area which have been changed. Other than that, we've got the parts in the audio amplifier, and obviously we can hear that. We've got parts in the power supply. I'm not going to go through and check them. Um, I say I've got an ESR meter on here. I mean that's a Sanyo one. They, you know they, they are good makes like this uh, in the Cybernet sets. And in fact the capacitors are better quality than what's in the Uniden ones. So there you are. That's something between the Cybernet and the Uniden camp for you both for you all. Um, 
where did I put that um, that meter? We'll just check this one at random, one of the Sanyo ones. So this should be 47 microfarads at 25 volts. Radio way less now because it's it got smaller parts in it. It's 55. So it's slightly high, which can be indicative of failure. You know, going to happen. But there we are. I will put it back together and we'll put it on an aerial. Okay, let's see what we can do now. Turn the test equipment off. Well, Nana, Roger. So um, we will put it on to see if we can do a scratchy corner test or whether we'll have to delay that some time because uh, of the foreign interference. It's nearly as bad as CPT is here. Right, well that uh, concludes the Hario CBX uh, recap and I'm sure the customer will have another 38 years of sterling service from that. Very nice radio indeed and with the factory original mic. We'll see how that sounds on our test later on. Thanks for watching.